The next person I want to talk about is Gifford Pinchot. Gifford Pinchot lived in Pennsylvania, and he was from a very wealthy family that made all their money in, as a timber company. They were cutting down all the forests of Pennsylvania. And when Pinchot grew up, there was really nothing left for them to cut down. They had cut down all the trees and sold them for farmland, and they had nowhere to go. And the future looked rather bleak uh, for forestry. And so he went to Europe, and Europeans had been cutting down trees and having wood produced in their forests for thousands of years. And so he went to learn how do foresters do it in Europe. And he learned that forestry is a lot about replanting, growing up forest stands. It's a science of how trees go, grow, how the forest will need certain nutrients, um, how far the trees should be spaced. And he brought all of these ideas home. And he developed what is known as the resource conservation ethic. And the resource conservation ethic states that nature should be used to provide the greatest good for the greatest number of people for the longest time. So it's the idea that you should be helping a lot of people, not just one family should be gaining the money off of the forest, but it should be for everybody. It should be in a sustainable way, so there'll be wood for the future, so that you'll replant trees, not just cut trees, so it'll last for the longest time into the future for the greatest number of people for the longest period of time. This is the idea of sustainability. Sustainable development of a resource means that you get what you need now, but you don't take everything. So you don't compromise the needs of future generations. And it's been expanded to say you have to keep the forest, you have to keep the resource um, intact environmentally. You have to keep the diversity, you have to keep the ecosystem functioning in order for that to happen. And so Pinchot was actually uh, very influential because he was from a wealthy family and uh, he became the chief of the U.S. Forest Service. He, he established the initial U.S. Forest Service and the U.S. Forest Service adopted this ethic, the resource conservation ethic, as the underlying ethic of the time. And he also uh, set up the first professional organization for foresters, the first forestry school in the United States at Yale University, and he developed a scientific journal for, for the foresters in the United States. He was able to do all of this because he was very close friends with this guy, Theodore Roosevelt. So this was the first president in the United States who seriously thought we needed to protect nature. He increased the size of the National Forest System uh, by 400%. And he used the Antiquities Act of 1906 to create national monuments, and almost every president since him has continued to do that. And he looked at a balanced approach. We need preservation. He followed the preservation ethic and realized we needed wilderness areas, national parks. We need to set aside natural areas in their pristine state. He was an outdoorsman. He loved spending time outside. But he also said we need some sort of uh, natural resources. We need to take water. We need to use wood. And so you need to have this done in a sustainable way. So you also have to follow the resource conservation ethic um, and have sustained productivity of these natural resources. So he was a leader in promoting um, the idea to people of the United States they need to spend some time outside, making the national parks accessible, having people to go out and spending time, recreational time in the wilderness was essential for the country because it enhances your personal growth. And you really don't hear presidents talking about that anymore. You have them talk about how you need to work hard, volunteer, spend more time in the community, spend more time at work, but not really spending time enhancing your own personal growth. And having people um, enhancing their personal growth and, and exploring their values can definitely help the country as a whole. So Roosevelt was friends with John Muir. So uh, working with John Muir, he was convinced that um, the federal government should be protecting these natural areas. The states were not doing a very good job. A lot of the states were very corrupt in this. And the federal government would be a better protector of parkland than the states. And also Pinchot moved, his family moved him to Washington, D.C. And uh, working with uh, Roosevelt, he became the chief of the U.S. Forest Service um, to get the, the federal government having strict controls over commercial use of woodlands. And so um, Roosevelt was able to protect the areas he loved and defend his policies of protecting those areas. So he created 150 national forests. 
51 national wildlife refuges, five national parks, and the idea that air, water, forest land, animal life, the plants and animals of these areas were important for the country as a whole. And that we as an entire country have the responsibility to keep these things safe. So it's in a collective interest to keep all of the, the natural areas and these natural resources safe for the future generations.